Welcome back to another episode of Chum Chat. We have a guest here that has a nice hat on. Uh, this is Chandler, special guest. He's a D1 soccer player for UMass. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's right. He cuts hair pretty well. Isn't that right? <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. It's all right. <laughs> and he also is a, is a golf connoisseur, and he's trying to be uh, on the PGA Tour soon. So uh, check him out on the golf course. But, uh, yeah, this is Chandler. He grew up in uh, England. A uh, little background on him. He plays soccer. Uh, he never played any other sport, apparently. So uh, only soccer. But uh, just to get back into it, um, th- th- he just met the boys. We're getting along well. Judd's got the Man U shirt on. Chandler's a Man U fan. They're already bonding. Oh, respect. You must have okay, loved seeing – I was gonna say you're a Man United fan. Yeah, yeah, you must have loved seeing uh, that game yesterday, man. I I know I did. What happened to Man City? City? What happened to Man City? City? Game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Sterling ass. Yeah, it's always totally a good day when Man City messes up. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, I don't know. I mean, I, mean I know it's tough to see for you, Jed, especially you know having been in the Champions League quarters for some time, eh? Why? Who do you support? I support City. Oh. That is a joke. How long have you supported them? What, two years? Yeah, no, thank no, no, you. no, no, thank no, no, no. Since, since I would have, since I would have, since I would have won, won in 2012. I was 11, to be That's fair. That's so cap. That's so cap. That's not a cap Plastic. at all, Judd. <laughs> Judd, you so didn't even know how to say Leon. Yeah, he's he, lying, dude. They spell it with a Y. L-Y-O-N. It he just should be it, lying. They, he just called him lying. That's, that's when you know that Judd doesn't <laughs> watch soccer. It shouldn't be. I don't even have a TV lying. right now. I can't Yikes. watch it. Yikes. Yikes. Anyways, let's get into the first question. Basically, uh, we want to know, Chandler, um, you grew up in England. Explain what that's like in a soccer perspective, um, how things are different there than here, maybe. Uh, well, I feel like, first of all, like you understand, like football, soccer here is different all over the country. Like soccer here is like you, if you want to kind of be good, you got to pay. Like you got to pay to be in the academy. You got to pay all this sort of stuff. Whereas England, like everyone plays. And, like, the standard range is completely differently. You know what I mean? Uh, like, I started playing when I was, like, four or five. I don't even remember. Started playing, like, when it started to get, like, a good standard, probably, like, 11, 12. And then once you once you get from there, like, certain people can get seen. Like, I, I used to have a best friend growing up. He was my best friend from, like, the age of five to, like, 10 or whatever. And we both played. We are probably both the same level. And then he got scouted to play professionally at Millwall. But obviously at a young age, so it's still academy. So he got all the coaching that. He still plays professionally. Uh, it's, 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 luck. it's luck in England. Like if you – it's such high standard, like nobody goes professional. Right. It just sounds a little tougher, huh? So, I yeah, mean, basically, basically based on what you're saying, I think one of my next questions was, do you think that growing up in England is better for your game than growing up in America? 100%. 100%. I uh, – I feel like it is it's different. Like uh, I feel like I have a complete different understanding of the game than people do over here. <clears throat> Just because the way it's it's I don't know how to describe it. It's football is a nature there. You know, you grow up around football, you watch football, you play football, you talk about football. Everything's football. Whereas here, it's like American football. You know, basketball, baseball. So yeah, yeah, yeah. If if you grow up in that that basketball or baseball or football environment, American football, I'm talking about. It's probably the exact same. Like everyone talks about it. You probably end like if I was to start playing American football, my understanding on the game would not be nowhere near as good as someone who's played it. You know what I mean? The whole, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know. It's just it's just completely different. Yeah, that makes sense because even like you watch videos on YouTube or whatever of guys from England and they already have that skill level already, and they may have never even played like organized soccer. But here, if you ask a random person to kick a ball, it's like. They don't even have the technique or anything. They're just, like, clueless on everything. So, I think American uh, – they're just behind in that aspect. And, and we're catching up, though. We're catching up. World Cup 20 uh, – when it comes to America, we're going to win. So, You guys definitely news. catching up. You guys definitely catching up, but not there yet. Not there yet, for sure. I think, you, the, most, I think the most important thing is just making it, like you said, more accessible to everyone. Because right now, I think me, Judd, and Tanner had the benefit of – you know, we didn't necessarily grow up, like, not poor, but, you know, like, needing money i guess so we were able to play soccer from a young age and grow up in that environment and then be able to exploit our talents at a higher level which then when we got to fc dallas then it was free but you know right. it takes a while to get there you know we were already 12 13 14 so yeah. it's a lot of lost years in between 
Yeah, I mean, see the different the difference like for you guys is so it's everyone plays it. There's so many people to play it. There's so many leagues. Like here, you kind of have like two options. As far as I understand, you have like two options. You play high school or you play academy, right? Whereas Basically. in England, it's like like I, at the age of 15, I was playing for an under 18s team or like I played the under 23s. If I wasn't coming to America, the head coach of my team that I was playing for, which is like semi pro, it's not it's not professional, but it's semi pro. He would have played me, but because he was like, I'm not going to put any time into you because I know you're leaving for America, so there's no point. And that was at a decent standard of league, which is men's league with guys who are you know 30 plus sometimes. So it, it's just completely different. Like it's it's hard to understand. So for you guys, like if I'm travel 20 minutes down the road, I can go to like a really nice facility and practice, you know. Whereas in England, it's like that doesn't exist. You know, like to get to a good facility, you see, like you, you have to be associated with like a, a really good football club or just be lucky that there's maybe a nice field nearby. You know, usually it's the weather's crap, ground is muddy, grass isn't good, it's not cut, you know, so it's environment is nowhere near as it's not the same. All right. That's true. I mean, actually, all the facilities here are, are really nice. So, yeah, I was going to say that actually. So, I don't know if you know, but I play in Portugal and that's what I was telling my parents. So, I went back. Uh, for quarantine during COVID and here everything is like you to find a field or to find good facilities you have to be associated with like a obviously a good club or whatever and then at, at home like I could just drive two minutes and then there's a perfectly good pitch with nets and everything just like two minutes away from my house so it's completely different um, but yeah I agree with that yeah. yeah but so you've come over to play soccer in college obviously you just said uh, what has that experience been like maybe uh how did you have to adapt when you came over new country, new culture, and maybe uh, any soccer aspects, like different style of play, different things like that? How did you have to adapt? Uh, so when I came over, I went, I did one semester at, at junior college, at Hill College. Uh, when I went there, they were ranked sixth in the nation. They uh, didn't like the national a few times. Uh, that was completely different to D1. So the junior college was more, a lot of international guys who, you know, weren't smart enough to go to D1. I personally went there because I was kind of pushed there for my family to go to a smaller college, adapt to American life, American college, like get used to it rather than going to a big D1, you know. Um, I also had an injury like in the season where I was supposed to be getting filmed to transfer to America. Uh, so I didn't really have many options, but they, they were good. But then when I go to D1, the gap between junior college and D1 was huge. And... I would say the biggest thing is just physicality, you know. Uh, not everyone is necessarily the most skilled. Obviously, there is a lot of skilled people because it's Division One, But, the, you know, you're playing against guys who are not kids, if you know what I mean. Like, you're playing against guys who are either probably played semi-pro in a foreign country, probably got paid under the table. I know a lot of people like that. Uh, I know you're playing, you're playing guys who... You know, they, they know how to play. I'd say that's the biggest difference. It's the closest thing I could get to playing in England, I'd say. Yeah. For me so far. So, yeah, for sure. I, I definitely – I play for SMU, so I'm, the physicality is definitely a, a factor. And, you know, even coming from academy at FC Dallas to D1 in college, it's like – it's definitely a big difference in physicality rather than, you know, playing the game of soccer. So I, you know, there's there's a bunch of stuff going on right now. Obviously, everyone knows about coronavirus and all that. I know you're a senior. How's that affected you, and how do you think that will affect you? It's had a big effect on my current future and everything that's going on with me. So I'm currently going into my senior year at UMass, uh, but I was supposed to be graduating in December. Obviously, we were supposed to have a season that got called called off completely. I don't know about you. Are you playing? Uh, no, they don't know yet. I know they canceled our, uh, our, you know, our final tournament, but I don't. They haven't made a decision yet regarding our season. Well, I, uh, I guarantee they're probably going to cancel it. Just from what I've heard from yeah. my coaches and stuff. I don't know. Um, basically, yeah, no season. Um, UMass just actually like a week ago, they were supposed to have people on campus. They completely canceled that because like a second wave or something. I don't know. Um, so they're, they're aiming for a spring season. Obviously, I graduate in December, so that's a bit tricky for me. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen, but who knows? If you could just share what your goals are for soccer, and if you don't have any goals for soccer, then what was your goal coming across, over to America uh, to pursue in, in everyday yeah, life? 100%. So when I was in England, 
my attitude shifted probably around, but <clears throat> around about the age of like 14, 15, because I knew that I wanted to come to America and play soccer. So my goal was to, you know, play as high standards I can get over there, um, play as well as I can, improve as much as I can. Obviously, I was going through, like, you know, body was changing, puberty, all that sort of stuff. I feel like I was a bit of a late bloomer in terms of like filling in my body. Uh, but I feel like I was always like a, a few steps ahead of my people around me. But I mean, I played, I played in the FA Youth Cup twice, scored like three goals in it. Didn't get very far. The team wasn't that great, but we, we wow. played in it. Big time. Uh, nah, not that big time. We only got to like first, second round. Um, first year, we got knocked out on pens. Difficult, scored a goal. Second year, knocked out on pens again. Did you take scored a pen? two goals. Yes, right. I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, keeper saved it, all right? Get this right. Okay, get this. Okay, so our keeper got sent off in the penalty shootout. How's that? Have you, ever seen that? Have you ever seen that before? I've no, what did he do? The, the keeper was in goal. The kid's an idiot, honestly. He wasn't our first keeper. The first keeper couldn't make it to the game. So we had the second guy. He, he had the sock boots, all right? The keeper with the sock boots, you know, you just know he's not a good keeper. Anyway, he, he, the kid was about to take penalty and he, he, he flipped him off. He, like, you know, stuck his middle finger up. And the ref saw it and was like, what are you doing? Red card. And then we stuck our, like, left back in goal. Save one. And then, like, just let the rest in. <laughs> Wow, yeah. that's one oh, yeah. intimidation factor. I mean, it was like it was a. It was also like I was the penalty after all this, and it was like five ten minutes of like commotion. Like the keeper wouldn't get off the field. I'm not. I'm not making excuses. Trust me, I should have scored. Sounds it wasn't like a bad it. pen. It wasn't a bad <laughs> pen. The keeper made a good save. The keeper made a good. Save. I didn't miss. I hit the target. Uh, but yeah, it is what it is. So yeah, in terms of my goals, I wanted to come to America. Uh, Obviously, as I said, my my first team coach wouldn't let me play because I wasn't I wasn't going to stay. Otherwise, he'd, he'd had a conversation with me. He was like, "Yeah, I want you in my team, but I'm not going to bother most of the time with you." And then when I got to Hill College and I was playing junior college, uh, my goal at first was just to develop myself. And then I got the opportunity to come to UMass, and I could have waited to get for di- different schools, but they just come off winning the conference and uh, conference tournament making it to nationals for the first time in a while so they <clears throat> they just had a new coach in who I thought you know would be able to develop me big time so I made the decision after one semester which is rare people that go to community college uh, to transfer straight to D1 um, and then from D1 I would say my goals was just to be playing minutes all the time you know get as, get as, get as good as I can I'd say the difference between England and here is I never had professional ambitions in England because it was like it just doesn't happen you know I don't the, the chance of it happening doesn't happen like I know a kid that was in the Chelsea Academy until the age of 16 got dropped major depression like his mental game just went down down a drain because he he thought he was going to be professional 16 like he was a striker thought everything was going well got dropped they just said see you later that's how that's like how it most, works for most people so I, you know, my goals in England was never go professional I knew I wasn't good enough um, but here, as like as you know, Tanner, probably I'm trying to trying to get get into the professional side of the game here. I think it's possible. Just need a few few things to go right, and then uh, we'll see how it goes. You heard it here first when challenging the professional game. We you heard it here first. first. We we put yeah. him there. Chum chat made it happen. So chum chat. <laughs> chum chat. Um, yeah, but we actually have a, a question that we ask all of our guests about success because that's what we try to do. We try to define success. So, uh, so what is your definition of success and do you think you've achieved it? Or if you don't think you've achieved it yet, what do you think you have to do to be able to achieve success in your opinion? Uh, I'm wondering if there's like a, a standard of answer. Uh, we've we've gotten some pretty good answers, but we've gotten some, we've gotten like, some banging yeah, answers. Yeah, see, you, you, you know, it's I'm, just, I'm just, it's your opinion. That's the point of it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, see, I'm not, I'm no like Olympian or something. You know what I mean? I'm just some kid from England. <laughs> no, that's, that's the, that's the yeah, point. You're up though. and coming. Yeah, and they're okay, maybe yeah. already done with their career, so it's different. Look, okay, the way um, I, the way I see it, the way I see it is, look, before Danelle was an Olympian, he was just a teenager. Before Dabo Sweeney was a college coach, he was just another, uh, just an assistant coach. I don't know what he was, Tanner, but you know, like everyone starts somewhere. So. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I mean, I've I've experienced a lot in terms of soccer. I've been through Sunday league soccer, through good soccer, through college. You know what I mean? So I, I feel like I've experienced more than the most most people. Um, 
I would define success as knowing that you don't have any, like, like, you know, when you have that feeling of like, you don't feel fulfilled because you know, you could have done better. Whereas if you have success is knowing that you gave everything and you got exactly what you wanted and knowing that you put everything into it, you know? It's a solid yeah, I, I that, agree that's that. solid. It's good. That's an interesting take on it too. I like that. I like the because way it's just, that. it's just a mental thing. Like yeah. you define, there's no, there's no definition of success. Exactly. Right. Wow. Well, exactly. I agree. Well, so, I mean, don't, we're going to have to cut that out because that's our whole brand defining success. So we're going to have to cut yeah, that we're out. Gonna have yeah. to cut that out. Yeah, we're going to have to like, <laughs> whatever, um, whatever. Anyway. Yeah. What's just to wrap it up. Of, we're going to the second part of the question. Well, it? if you don't, if you don't think you've achieved success, what do you think it would take for you to get there? Uh, I think, well, first, do you think you've achieved success? No, no, yet. I think I've achieved a form of success, which most people would be happy with, but I'm not happy yet. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, like most people think, you know, like the majority of people that play college shark or D1 are like, yeah, like mid college D1. Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm the boy, you know? Uh, yeah. And they don't see an end goal, you know, whereas I see a, another. Yeah, that's another what I was going to say that. <laughs> you're like, hey, you're, 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 SM, you're at SMU. Like, what position do you play? Center back. Okay. okay. How tall are you? 5'8". <laughs> I, would, I would spank you. I wouldn't even have to jump to beat you to a header. Come you, on. you want to spank me. That's that's not even, that's <laughs> oh not even true. Come on. I'm at SMU come for a reason, come baby. Come on. I'm at SMU Five, for eight. a reason. Yeah, yeah, you probably could nice footwork. You can play, you can play some nice balls at the back, but once a big center, center striker comes in, bam! See you later. You're on the floor. Yeah, but I actually have a lower center of gravity, so I don't get knocked over. I can just follow you. I'll yeah, send you some games. I'll send you, you some games. You know what I mean? No, we might have to wait uh, and do a chance. Maybe we'll see you some maybe. game film, oh, Jed. What games have you been playing, Jed? We played one yesterday. All right. I'll send you some video from that. I'm just kidding. Probably good at asking you. I'm just kidding. We'll settle this some other some other time. But anyways, we'll go into the rapid yeah, fire, we'll, Jeff. Let's. I'm gonna pop uh, some game film on the screen right now. Uh, Bro, what are you talking about, man? I feel like Please I'm don't. a Please soft don't. spot. We got a soft spot here or something, haven't we? Like, these two give me enough crap. We got that small man height. syndrome I'll, or something. These you? two give me enough crap for my height. I'm I'm used to defending it. <laughs> I've never anyway. heard anything about your height, bro. Yeah, yeah, I don't think we've ever said anything about he your height. He said stuff yet. about my height. We only talk Mike about your Mike Noonan long says balls. stuff about my height. Tanner, you know that. Mike Noonan says stuff about my height. Well, yeah, when you got other center backs that are six beast and you're over here looking like li- – All right, Walker. this is Chandler's <laughs> interview. These, these aren't the chronicles really of Jetson. pretty tall. Yeah, let's, let's shift the focus. Um, just, just want to wrap it up with a little bit of rapid fire. Um, so I'm asking you a series of questions and just answer them as honestly and as quickly as you can. So you, you ready? Yeah. Lucas Aid or Gatorade? I'm not a fan of Eva. Wow. Um, do you really drink tea every day? Like, do you still do tea time even though you're in America? I've probably had about eight cups of tea in my whole life. Okay, so that's a stereotype then. Huh, good to know. Uh, let's see. Do you use bro or mate more? Mate, hundred percent. I don't say bro. And ever since you've been in America, has your vocabulary changed at all? Because I know in England, y'all say crisps instead of chips and all that weird crap. I has it changed a... at all to be normal? Uh, hold on, change normal. Um, <laughs> I have adapted to your form of English. Have a that. Smelling a little bit of beef that's, between Jetson and, and Chandler. Uh, sure I thought they started off as mates, Man U fans, and now I'm <laughs> we are Man U. At the end of the day, of... we are Man U fans, Chandler. I'm English. You wear my. We country. always wrapped it. Yeah, and I'm American, so there's that. I love it. Right, next question. That's it. That's all I have. Oh my that was God, that was like rapid fire. Dude. That was pretty <laughs> wag, bro. I told you. Let, you me some, let me get some rapid fire real quick. I kind of, I kind of grouped all the English stuff into one question. See, that's it. That, see, that's the thing that that was like the most stereotypical questions. Like exactly, bro. Like, what is he trying to say, bro? Like, well, like, I gotta get the fans. So what trash. They want. I gotta give the fans what they want. They want the stereotypical answers. Oh, shut up. Uh, to be fair, like honestly, ninety-nine percent of people ask them questions. So if the fans want it, give it to them. Yeah, I was just trying to please. I, I, you've probably gotten that que- those questions. Do you want to tell you the follow the book? This is what happens when I meet an American that hasn't met an Englishman before. Like yeah. they, say, they, 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 first of all, what they do is they try and copy your accent, 
It's always what they do. <laughs> First thing that you say something and they'll copy it and it's like, oh, good one. Never heard that before. <laughs> and then they'll ask about tea and you go, oh, yeah, you know, you probably drink more iced tea than I've ever drank anyway. You know, and then they'll come, they'll whack on to something like, have you ever seen this? Have you ever done this? You know, and it's like, we don't live in a third world country. Let's talk about right, I got a chips. new segment. New segment. About so I'm gonna, chips. I'm gonna say a British word, a term, and you're gonna have to say what it means in, for Americans. All right. All right. And like in in one to three words, because it can't be that long. Judd, you know Judd this is Tanner doing your job better than you do it. All right. So. Yeah, Judd. We literally gave I've you. I've got limited resources. We gave you one job. We gave you one job. You see how it says Judd's iPhone and not Judson Burns? That's because I'm on an iPhone five right now, trying to do this. Oh, shut up. Excuses. All right, are you ready? Ready. Biscuit. Uh, it's a cookie. Boot. It's a shoe or a back of a car. There you go, back of a car. That's what it says here. Okay, let me see. Crisps, because I bet a lot of people won't know that one. Chips, like Lay's. Dummy. For Dummy. baby. For baby. Oh, yeah. well, you just basically answered my the question, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's there's another word for it. Oh, wait, what are you talking about? You're talking about the English version? Yeah, like dummy for a baby, the English version. What's the American? What are you asking right now? Hey. I, mate, I don't know. Yeah, you have power <laughs> in my lap. You know the word I suck on? So, so wait, you, you're giving dummy me the for baby. word. Do you want me to give you the American word? Yes. I, uh, because if, if I give you the American know, word. A, a sucker? I don't know. All right, do you want me to give you the American word and then you say the what? British word? It's a pacifier, right? It's a pacifier. That's it's what you a mean pacifier. To say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A dummy, yeah, dummy. Come on. All right. Holiday. Holiday is like a vacation. There you go. All right, uh, let me see. Let me see. <laughs> Nobody says vacation in England. You always like, oh, it's the, it's the holiday on the weekend, you know? Right. If you don't ever say, I'm going on vacation with my family, going on holiday. Hey, what about okay. fag? So that's a, that's a cigarette. There you go, Judge. Over here, you know, into his over segment. here, you, if 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 you're about to say, if like say over here, someone says I'm going to go smoke a fag, it means you're going to go shoot like a gay a gay guy. <laughs> oh, another one. You smoke a fag, it's like you're going to have a cigarette. <laughs> Judge probably smoked some fags. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> some of these are kind of iffy. I'm being honest. Yeah, where are you getting these from? Uh, do, we yeah. te- do we teach you a few slang words? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go on, go on. All right, you ever heard the word peng? Yeah, peng? yeah. like a bad thing. Yeah. Like she's nice, <laughs> yes. she's fine. Don't say that, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, it's like good looking, like very attractive, then there's peng. Yeah. P-E-N-G. That's, that's why Judd ain't ever know, because he, he's never got there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. else. Okay. I, I watched yeah, yeah. I watch Top Boy, so like you know, I'm up there. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, let me teach you another one. You know what a batty boy is? Yeah, that's that's like Jamaican, so like. Yes, yeah, like yeah, patois. But British so is, is kind of a little bit of patois. What are y'all so. saying right now? Isn't it? Yeah, go isn't home. it like a, isn't he gay? I'm like home, gay? Baby. It's uh, like an insult. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, it is. It is that, but it's not necessarily like necessarily homosexual. It's just like yeah, you like, batty boy, like yeah, you're gay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Another one. Judge, you batty boy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, um, shut up, Tanner. You're talking about dummy for baby earlier. That made no sense. Judd, can you Look shut up, up right and let now. him teach us some slang? I'm learning. G- give me like a topic and I'll give you a slang word for it. Like, we you like, we talk- always play soccer. So is there any soccer slang terms that we could use on the field that maybe they use in England that we could use nowadays here in America? Uh, thing on the like, – you know what square it means? You must know what that means. Yeah, like played across. Like across. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, on the head. On right. your head? On the head. On, on the head. On the head. On the head. Oh, on the head. Like That's pretty self explanatory. On the head. Bam. Whip a ball in on the head. Boom. There you go. Try um, it on your head. On the head, baby. Like if you're to spank it, do you know what that means? Just kick Boot it out. It. Now, if you spank a ball, it means you're absolutely like whipping the hell out of it. Like, it's absolutely connected perfectly with the ball. You're spanking it. Like a, Say, like like a banger. Ball top, 
spank, spank the ball top bins. Like I've just spank the ball, top corner. Spank the ball top bins with a little bit of swaz. No, nah, a little bit of swaz. No, it's not really. Not spooned. Is that though. is that more like an F two thing? Like when they say swaz, or is it like a British thing? F two is a little bit of a kiddie version of what England's like, you know. Mm, okay. Okay. They, they, yeah, their audience in England is, you know, under twelve usually. Well, I'm gonna unsubscribe now. <laughs> yeah, no, Judd's probably got notifications. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got the bell on. Judd definitely yeah. knows about the spoon too. He's he definitely got some. Line. He's probably got their merch and all, but it's all good. <laughs> so, so okay. on eBay. Um, do you know what spooned it means? Like he Judd's it? all about that. So Judd probably knows all about it. Honestly, like you take yeah. a shot and it goes like this. Whew. You spooned yeah. it. Like you shanked yeah, it. Yeah, like missed. You shanked, you shanked it, yeah. Yeah, you missed I, I, royally, though. On shots, yeah. Yeah, I can spoon some shots. For and sure. long balls. And long balls, Jed. My long balls are good, dude. I freaking told you this last year. We Ask Johan. Johan, how good have my long balls gotten? Bro, we were like 10 yards apart. What are you talking about? <laughs> Just to give you a little insight, uh, Chandler, Judd can't hit the ball past 40 yards in the air. Back 40 yards you, max. I use well, right center back. Start, does it start curling or does it just not even reach? I'm able it to. Even it reach. Starts cur- no, it starts curling. He doesn't know how to hit it like driven. Our next guess is going to be one that can prove I can hit long balls. It, this thing is, I'll, it, I'll your mom's not going to come so on. So it'll be a boys night. episode because uh, we <laughs> yeah, can't get a guest. Yeah, it'll be a boys episode because we can't get a guest Judd to prove no guest. <laughs> I'll get Brandon on. Brandon can prove it. All right, well, anyway. I guess that's it. Appreciate having Chandler on, showing us a little bit of slang, just uh, talking about some of the some of the things he wants to achieve, uh, his childhood a little bit. Make sure if y'all are watching this, leave a like, subscribe. You already know the deal. Uh, this is a fire episode, honestly. A little bit of a different twist, but still just as good. Uh, Chandler, thanks for, ha- thanks for coming on with us. It was a pleasure. Yeah, nice yeah, to meet thank you. thank you, Chandler. City will always be better than United, and well, we'll just leave it at that. All right, make sure to subscribe. Love y'all.